Well, I've been coming to India regularly for the past five years because we have a program developing children's palliative care in Maharashtra linked to developments in Malawi as well. And so every year I come to the, the Indian conference and usually I speak about part of the project and this year I spoke about developing models of care um, because we took a model of excellence in Mumbai and we've replicated it um, in different ways in three other hospitals. Um, and so I spoke about that and then tomorrow I'm going to be speaking about um, children's expressions of dying, what they say and how they experience dying from the outside. I mean, all I can do is tell, tell the stories um, and also looking at how we put together a technical package uh, of uh, children's palliative care for organizations that want to start it. Um, because I, I'm on the WHO Technical Advisory Group on Palliative Care and that's one of the things that we're doing in this particular group. It's, it's the model based in Tata Memorial Center in the Department of Palliative Care where they deal with adults and with children um, and they've been providing this palliative care for a number of years not only within the hospital but also in the community as well um, doing outreach to patients who are, who've, who've been in hospital but who have left hospital and they also do a tremendous amount of education so it's a model that's based within the health system um, but they use a lot of volunteers as well. So while they're based within the, in the health system, they also have a great involvement of the community um, through the volunteers and through their outreach into the community. And it was just, it, it's a, a model where they give a very high standard of palliative care for children. And so we felt it had all the elements that we would like to see replicated in other hospitals as well. And so we took it then, first of all, to a center of excellence for HIV for children in Sion Hospital and the interesting thing there is that they started in the clinic for HIV um, for children but it then went on to children with sickle cell, children with neurological conditions and now it's within the whole pediatric department. So from the clinic in HIV to the whole pediatric department. Then we went to a rural hospital uh, about four hours out of, out of Mumbai, where they have a little cottage hospital linked to four primary healthcare clinics and then a big uh, community project. Um, and there we trained the ASHA workers, the community workers, to identify children who need palliative care. And there they picked up a lot of children with cerebral palsy especially. Um, and so that training has gone from the hospital to the clinics into community workers. And the third model was a public-private partnership linked to a medical um, educational facility as well. And it's a Mahatma Gandhi centre run on the, on, the, um, on the ideals of Mahatma Gandhi as well. So it's been a really interesting journey with starting with a particular model that really was based in the cancer hospital and seeing how we could adapt it to all these different settings. We're actually here at the conference um, hoping that we can persuade some funders as well um, to continue it and there's been a number of requests uh, to, to take it into other states in India as well. We're doing this alongside um, a similar thing in, in Malawi where they've taken a model in one of the central hospitals in Blantyre and it's been um, introduced into all the central hospitals in Malawi and now it's going to go, be rolled out to the districts. We're doing an assessment of need, um, of how many children need palliative care. We did it in three African countries to get the methodology, and now that methodology is being applied in a variety of other countries so that we can do an est a global estimate. Um, we know it's at least 20 million, um, and the figure is probably higher than that. And our recent preliminary data out of, out of India was uh, just under 7 million for generalized care, and just under two million for specialized palliative care. And that was excluding the children with um, the, the severe sequelae of, of cerebral palsy. And that is a huge number. So it's big numbers. And the 20 million is a very low estimate of the global need. 
I think that what is really important is that we remember that children need palliative care just as much as adults and that to provide that palliative care people have to have the proper training to not just to care for the clinical side but to care for the, the emotions, the spiritual side of children um, and to communicate with children from that tiny little newborn baby up until the young adult. Well, it would depend where you are in the world. You know, if you're in a country that's close to another country where there's good training and um, a good clinical practical site, and um, that would what be what we would recommend, that you went to the nearest place to learn. But there are parts of the world where, in fact, there are very few resources. So as the International Children's Palliative Care Network, we decided the only way to get it out there was through e-learning. Where there, there isn't the availability of face-to-face um, -face training and experience, then we do encourage people to do e-learning.